Well, all right, all right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Hot Seat Automotive Podcast. It's your buddy CJ here, and tonight we're talking about all things automotive industry, car guy stuff, real gearhead talk. We talk about cars, 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 all the things that automotive enthusiasts really love talking about. Guys, welcome back to all my subscribers. You know I love and appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new to the channel, give me a like and subscribe. Everybody's welcome here. We talk about motorsports, cars, automotive industry, automotive events, car shows, rallies, road trips, you name it. All things that gearheads love talking about. Guys, let's get right into it. Tonight, we're going to have some fun. We're talking about eight things that car guys do to ruin their cars. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's all in good fun. It's all subjective. Guys, don't take this stuff too seriously. Your buddy CJ says, you know I love you. You know I'm a good car guy just like you. But we got to laugh. Life is short. We got to laugh, car guys, car girls. Come on. If you can't laugh, then what's the point? So let's get right into it. These are eight ways you can get your car red flagged. You do some of these things. Your buddy CJ come and check out your car. I'm going to tell you it's red flag. That means if I see that, if I see any of these mods on your car, I might think mm, that car has been messed with. That car has been mad messed with. Come on, guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know what's on your list of, of ways car guys ruin a perfectly good car. Let's get right into it. Okay. In no particular order. Number one way car guys ruin a nice car. Big, ridiculous aftermarket wings. What y'all need that big wing for? You going to the airport? You got to call the FAA to get air traffic approval for that wing? You ain't going to the track with that car. Who you kidding? <laughs> Come on. We roasting now, guys. But let me tell you something. When I see a car with an aftermarket wing, mm, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In the history of, of automobile manufacture, factory hot rods, high performance cars will typically have aero and wings on them. And I get it as car guys, as enthusiasts, we want to emulate that sometimes with a car that maybe from the factory was a bit more stock. Now, if you build in a wild track monster, I get it. You might need that wing properly engineered and dialed in for downforce. But I'm going to say this right now. Listen up, car guys. If you have any components on your car, such as an aftermarket wing, and it's secured by double stick tape, you know, two-sided tape, adhesive, you may need to rethink some of your life decisions. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> I don't know. Listen, I see a lot of these wings, they wobbling down the road. They're not even mounted right. They're not configured right. They may be adversely affecting the aerodynamics of the vehicle. Real talk. Most of us are not aerodynamic engineers or race engineers. Okay? So you put a wing like this on your car, you can actually foul up the aero. It's a statement, maybe. It's an image. I get it. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think a lot of dudes be ruining their cars, putting them silly wings on them. <laughs> Come on. We having fun tonight. Let's keep going. What do we think about these aftermarket grills? Guys, I'm not a fan of these goofy aftermarket grills. I see them on a lot of Jeeps and trucks. I see them on cars, too. I don't know. To me, it's just... You know, I get it. Like my, my car's got little eyebrows and it looks angry and it's got a face. Like maybe that's your thing. But for me, I just think it's kind of a goofy mod. I also know that if I was looking at this truck, I'd say, yo, what did they do with the original grill? Like if I was, if I was buying this Jeep that I'm looking at in this photo, I'd be like, yo, I want the original grill back. I'll buy the Jeep, but give me the grill and get rid of that thing. <laughs> I don't know. Not a fan. Let me know what you guys think. Jeep people, I'm not picking on you. We just having fun tonight. Truck dudes do it too. And uh, I see enough cars with it. What do we think about aftermarket grills? And I see the grill inserts as well. Uh, people go overboard with some of this mesh. I was just talking to a, to a truck guy the other day, a big truck guy. He was telling me a story about the mesh in certain weather conditions. He had a big over the road truck. Uh, in a hailstorm, for example, that mesh actually caused a clog and blockage so that his, his truck was starting to overheat. He had to stop and clear all the hail, and then he pulled the mesh out when he stopped for the night. Like, I use that as an example. Like, some of y'all think it's a mod and it's improving performance. It ain't helping performance a lot of times. It might be hurting it. 
and it might be making your car look goofy or your Jeep or your truck. So anyway, guys, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's see what, what else is on the list. Come on. Y'all need to stop with these badge jobs. Here's another way car guys ruin nice cars. They'll go and they'll buy these badges that were never put on the car by the manufacturer. They'll stick these badges in places on the car that never had badges from the factory. And then they'll sit there and argue with you when you call it out. Hey, by the way, I see you put some badges there. Oh, I didn't put those there. I bought the car that way. Oh, okay, because I don't think that's a factory badge. Oh, yeah, I think it is. That's how I bought the car. <laughs> you ever meet this guy? You ever meet that guy? But uh, anyway, we used to call these badge jobs. Like, in, you know, let's make fun of Corvette people for a moment. Notorious for doing it. Ain't no Z51 badge on a Fender. Come on. How about the BMW guys? Notorious. Putting them fake M badges on their cars. Mustang guys putting them coyote badges. Listen, you do what you want. It's your car, but I'm not a fan of badge jobs. I claim, you know, listen, you ain't fooling anybody. You ain't fooling me. Like maybe it may, if it makes you feel better, that's great. But seriously, you know, like there's, there's a cheesy aspect to it. It's like, really? Like what, 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 what you going for, bro? You know, uh, listen. I claim it's a red flag. When I go, when I look at a car and I see an aftermarket badge, I'm kind of turned off immediately or a, not even an aftermarket badge, a badge that w w is in the wrong spot or it, it doesn't indicate the model or the trim package of that car. It's a red flag. Come on. We're talking about ways car guys ruin cars and uh, guys, it's all in good fun here and in good spirits. Let's keep going. Wheels, wheels, wheels. Guys, the right wheels and the right tires on a car can really make it, okay? Whether it's a factory wheel and tire or an aftermarket wheel and tire. They can a wheel and tire can change the entire characteristic and appearance of a car, 100%. Now, having said that, it can also go the other way. It can have a negative impact. I think you got to be real thoughtful, especially with, with going some of the, with some of these extreme wheel and tire packages. Number one. It can ruin the appearance. Number two, it can ruin the handling characteristics. Even if you love the appearance, you kind of got to get things right. The right tire, the right sidewall, the right tread, okay? The right wheel, everything. The spacers, too much spacer, no spacer. You know, there's a lot of considerations. How's it going to affect overall handling? Okay, do your research. I want you to be happy. Your buddy CJ at the end of the day is a car guy like you. I claim when I look at cars, potentially cars I'm going to buy because I'm always in the market. If I start seeing aftermarket wheels and tires, it's a potential red flag in all seriousness. You know, I, I got to look a bit closer and I want to know where the original wheels and tires are. You know, has the suspension been messed with? There's a lot to it. The only, the only thing between you and the road is your wheels and tires, right? It's pretty important. And we all want to look cool going down the road, no doubt. But I see a lot of dudes ruining the rides, man. I, I'm sorry. Like, there's a lot of cars, especially the modern stuff, with just incredible wheel and tire packages. But sometimes instead of going with the factory stuff, guys will want to save a buck. So then they go aftermarket. Okay. And the aftermarket wheels look good, but they're not the same as the factory. I understand you, you want to stand out and you want to be different. But it's a fine line, and it's subjective. But for me... I see a lot of cars ruined with the wrong wheels and tires. Let me know what you guys think. Come on, let's keep going because we're having fun tonight. All the ways that car guys ruin cars. Every day, we having fun. All right, who knows what this is? Real car guy quiz. What is this? Of course, catalytic converters, exhaust system, looking up under the car, right? Here's a way you can red flag your car. Here's a good way to ruin a car. You start hacking off components like catalytic converters, because you want the car to sound better or maybe in your mind get some better performance, do your research and be careful. That's what your buddy CJ is going to tell you. A good way to end up in a tough spot with a car is to start cutting off your exhaust, real talk, and going too far. I've had modded exhaust. I've had loud exhaust. I've had it all over the years, guys, right? I'm, I'm not against performance exhaust. Don't get it twisted. What I'm telling you is, though, just be very careful when you start, especially with a modern car, car that's still under warranty, a car that's got to go through inspection, depending on your state, 
be very careful about cutting off your catalytic converters. You could be heading for check engine lights. You could be heading for idling problems. You could be heading for engine problems. You could be heading for all kinds of different things. When you go to sell the car, trade it in, the car could get red flagged for not having cats. You could void your warranty. Real talk, do your research. Don't take it from me. Do your research and tread lightly, okay? Strongly consider doing something like a cat back exhaust. Listen, if you're if you're going with a big money build to build a track car and you got the right shop or you got the right know-how, do it. Do everything you think is best, right? But if you're just hacking and cracking around the shop, you know, in your own garage, I should say, be careful. Don't get yourself in a tough spot with your car. That's my only warning in all seriousness. And I know for me, it's a huge red flag. When I see either in the in the service history report of a vehicle, because like I said, your buddy CJ is always in the market for vehicles. If I see something like cats were removed, cats were replaced, you know, whatever it is, something like that, I start questioning what is the real history of this car? Like what did this poor car go through that it had to have the cats replaced after 36 months, like that could either be not a big deal or that could be a really big deal. OK, that could potentially void your warranty. Uh, you know, listen, I want you to have fun with the car. Of course, I'm a car guy. I love wild exhaust systems. But just what I'm telling you is be careful because a lot of cars have been ruined with things like modded exhausts and air codes and engine codes and cars that don't run right anymore. And it all started with hacking the catalytic converters off. Come on, let's keep going. Let's keep going, guys, because we having fun tonight. Tuning cars, engine tunes, ECU tunes, performance tunes. This can be a great way to get additional power out of your car. And some of the highest performing cars on the road have ECU tunes and engine performance management system tunes, all those things. But... Be careful and tread lightly. This is also a good way to ruin a car if you're not careful. There's all kinds of horror stories out there, guys. Real talk. Your buddy CJ is willing to say it. And if anybody tells you different, listen, take it from me. You can pop your warranty with an engine tune, okay? You can cause drivability issues with the wrong type of tune. A lot of thought, analysis, engineering, and research went into your factory vehicle. I know you want another 150 horsepower. I know you want to go forced induction. I know you want to, you know, put larger fuel injectors and, and different intake and all those things in the, in the car. But when you do, and then you start messing with the engine computer, you could be heading for a lot of pain, agony, and suffering trying to get it right. And maybe dealing with a car that never really runs right. I just, I've been in the hobby too long, guys. And I've been through this too many times. I've experienced it myself. And I have a lot of friends and a lot of people I know in this hobby. If they're honest, and some of them are, <laughs> they've had a lot of problems with these aftermarket tunes, okay? So just tread lightly and be careful. It can be a great thing to get a, a, the right type of tune in your car. But you can also cause a lot of issues. Your buddy CJ just giving you that real talk telling you like it is. This is a classic way to ruin a nice car. You can ruin a nice car by messing with the ECU and the onboard engine computers. Guys, let's keep going. What's up with the tow hook trend? Why y'all got these tow hooks? Y'all need to be towed from the car meet because you broke down? Your girlfriend got to tow your car home from Food Line because you broke down going to the store? Like seriously, you know I'm messing around, but it's... You know, an extremely useful apparatus at the track for track days in motorsports. You know, th these these do have a useful purpose, but it's also a pose, right? People do it for an image, and I claim it could be a potential red flag. Like when I see a tow hook on a car, especially someone's daily, y'all putting these tow hooks on daily drivers, that I don't get. And I claim when I look at a car, the minute I see a tow hook, I'm like, either A, that car has been tracked a lot. Bro legit goes to the track and the car has been driven hard, real hard. Or B, there's a bunch of mods in that car and who knows who did them. Thing might run like a bag of hammers. Like, I don't know. That whole tow hook thing, especially when they're red, think red flag. You see that tow hook, it could be a red flag when you're looking at a car, particularly if you're thinking about buying it. Be careful. Guys, let's keep going. <laughs> let's keep going. 
Let's keep going tonight. Decals, decals, decals. What y'all putting all these decals on your cars for? Listen, I don't know. It's not my thing. I think there are a lot of tacky decals on nice cars and trucks. I'll leave it at that. Like, I get it. You know, you want to support your group or an image or some message, whatever it might be. But I, I think a lot of times, you know, it, you know, it, it can kind of ruin the vehicle. I think the minute I see these decals, like, I don't know. I, I just say to myself, that poor vehicle, what other horror stories is this vehicle hiding? Uh, knowing that the driver is, you know, took the time to put that decal on it. Like, I don't know, decal guys, listen, if you have these decals, whether it's a Punisher or whatever the heck it might be, I don't know. I don't get the whole Punisher thing. Like, really? What, what is that? That's a comic book thing, dude. Like what, you know? Uh, these fake race, racing stripes, like, or putting things like type R on a car. That ain't a type R. What you talking about? Racing, you know, putting, putting some stripe on it. They want to make it look like something it isn't, you know, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of that. I, me personally, and it's all subjective. I prefer a cleaner look on a vehicle, you know, uh, you start putting a bunch of decals on a car. Like I remember when we were kids, right? Remember when you were a kid? You got stickers and you put stickers on everything at school and at home. You're putting stickers like, I don't know. I don't want stickers on my car or my truck. Like, what are y'all doing? Chill out with these stickers. <laughs> Guys, just having a little bit of fun tonight. Do you know anybody who's kind of ruined their car uh, or their truck with just going overboard with these corny stickers? I know I do. Well, all right, guys, listen, I just want to come on here tonight and have a bit of fun. We're talking about eight ways that car guys ruin their cars. Listen, it's all in good fun, just for laughs. Let me know what's on your list. Did your buddy CJ miss anything? Go ahead, let me know. If, any, if you do any of these things to your car, that's fine. We can disagree, okay? But you got to leave me photos. you got to post the pics of your mods, and we're going to tell you whether or not we think they're tacky and awful, real talk. <laughs> or if we think they look cool. Listen, I'm not afraid to admit it. Uh, listen, guys, I just really enjoy talking with you. We're having such a great time on the channel. Hit me up on Hot Seat Gearheads as well on the gram. Send me those instant messages, guys. Give me those ideas for the shows. I love talking to you guys. Leave me those comments. Give me a like and subscribe. Guys, take care of yourself. Have a good one. Until we meet again on the next episode, your buddy CJ signing out. Till then, peace.